Hi, this is Salman Alana and Manos Brilakis presenting case 158 for the Manual of Percutaneous Coronary Interventions. This is a case illustrating some of the challenges of percutaneous coronary intervention in degenerated saphenous vein grafts. The patient was an elderly gentleman who presented with um, non-ST elevation myocardial infarction. Diagnostic angiography shows uh, a significant lesion in the proximal LAD. However, there is a patent lima. There is a circumflex with uh, a moderate proximal lesion and a chronically occluded saphenous vein graft going to the obtuse marginal branch. Then we do have a patent vein graft to the PDA. The native RCA was chronically occluded. We do have a degenerated saphenous vein graft to the diagonal with multiple lesions and a TIMI2 under great flow. This is the RA of you. Again, so um, severe eccentric uh, lesions with likely a large amount of plaque. And then we do have a patent lima to LAD with significant tortuosity. What to do next? Uh, the question in ACS patient is about the culprit lesion. And in this case, the culprit lesion appeared to be the saphenous vein graft to the diagonal branch. So the plan was to recanalize the graft, but because of the degeneration, the goal was to use an embolic protection. We do have the filter wire and the spider, and uh, we elected to use the spider. There was maybe not the best uh, landing zone distally, but we thought we could place a filter distal to the legion that could protect the native vessel. Sometimes actually we can place the filter partially inside the native vessel. And this is the baseline EKG of the patient for comparison. There is no ST segment changes and hemodynamics are good. So we inserted a, a uh, 2 to 5 to 3 5 millimeter filter wire inside the lesion. The filter wire uh, made it to the distal vessel. However, that caused significant chest discomfort and ST segment elevation. And we can see here that the flow is uh, very poor, and we do have this uh, severe ST segment elevation. So this is an example where just uh, putting a filter inside the vessel caused severe nori flow. Because of poor flow, we had to actually remove the filter, and a lot of uh, material came out with the filter. And this is how the saphenous vein graft looks now. So we barely have any undergrade flow. The SVG looks uh, disrupted with uh, multiple eccentric lesions. So how to treat noriflow? The mainstay is to give uh, vasodilators. Sometimes for native coronaries, we also give glycoprotein 2B3 inhibitors, which are of debatable use uh, in this setting. Some people might also give epinephrine, but this can cause significant hypertension and tachycardia. So in this case, we did give... Uh, Nicardipine, we gave the patient a glycoprotein 2B3 inhibitor, and actually the ST segment improved, although it's not perfect. We also gave intracoronary epinephrine, we can see how the blood pressure significantly increased. But eventually we were able to get uh, uh, undergrade flow back into the saphenous vein graft, although it does look uh, degenerated. But uh, there was uh, uh, still a significant disease in the graft. So the question here is what to do next. And one of the options when a patient has a degenerated saphenous vein graft is to actually treat the native coronary artery. So we did obtain a second access point and we engaged the left main and this is a dual injection. We do have the saphenous vein graft going to the diagonal. We do have filling of the native LAD through the left main. We see here the Lima feeling retrogradely. And this is a highly complex CTO. There is proximal cap ambiguity. Um, it's a short occlusion, but um, a lot of difficulties getting through. And this was uh, a lot of discussion with the referring team um, as well as uh, the patient. And eventually the decision was made to not actually perform attempt uh, uh, PCI of the native, but instead try once again with a different filter, try with a spider 
Um, the difference of the spider compared with the filter wire is that you can use a standard O35 wire and then you can exchange for the filter. So it might be a little less traumatic. So what we've done here is we advance the workhorse wire. We place the delivery catheter all the way essentially near the native vessel. And then we were able to deliver the spider into the native vessel. But unfortunately, we had actually even worse noriflow. And uh, the STs are actually worse now. And despite multiple uh, doses of vasodilators, uh, the patient continued to have noriflow and um, uh, ended up uh, abandoning the procedure, went to the unit. He did have an okay clinical course. He did have some atrial flutter, but eventually recovered. So multiple lessons from this case. The first one is that uh, degenerated saphenous vein graft, like this one, do have a significant risk of embolization. And although embolic protection may help, also going through very severe lesions with the filter itself might be a cause or a trigger for distal embolization. In this case, uh, the first time we had it, we were able to give vasodilators and glycoprotein to B3 inhibitors, and that helped restore undergrade flow. And retrospectively, we should probably have stopped there and bring the patient maybe back later on for an attempt to recanalize the native. Instead, we placed a second type of filter, hoping that the spider might cause less embolization compared with the filter wire, but that actually was not the case. We did have severe embolization, and the vessel could not be recanalized. So always beware when treating saphenous vein grafts. The risk of complications is significant, especially for distal embolization in highly degenerated saphenous vein graft. And in such cases, potentially a stage procedure in which um, the patient uh, comes back and will recanalize the native coronary artery, if technically feasible, might be the preferred way to go. Thank you.